Eared grebes and horned grebes are quite similar. Eared grebes are common in the West, rare in the East. Horned grebes are more widely distributed. In both summer breeding plumage and in winter non-breeding plumage, they can be fairly easy to tell apart. However, in both fall and spring, the transitional plumages can be a challenge to separate. Welcome! In this video, we'll learn how to identify and separate eared grebes from horned grebes. Grab your favorite field guide and follow along with me as we identify these look-alike birds. Both eared and horned grebes are small water birds. They are the size of green-winged teal. They have round, fluffy bodies, a medium to long neck, and thin, pointed bills. In summer, both birds are mostly black, with a yellow patch of feathers on the head. In winter, they are gray with a black crown and with a white cheek. They are not likely to be confused with the all-brown pied-billed grebe with its thicker bill. The larger redneck grebe has a longer, yellow spike of a bill. Before we get into the details of identifying and separating eared grebes from horned grebes, let's briefly consider their behavior, distribution, and habitat. Both of these grebes have similar behavior. They swim low in the water and dive often for food on ponds, lakes, and even open ocean within a few miles of shore. You will rarely see them fly. One way that these grebes do differ is in their desire to form flocks. Horned grebes are not social. If there are several birds on the same body of water, they tend to be spread out as single individuals. On the other hand, eared grebes often form large flocks. They breed in large colonies. After breeding, they move to staging areas for several months before continuing to their wintering grounds. They can form flocks numbering from a handful into the tens of thousands. Horned grebes feed on fish. They dive and chase them underwater and can stay submerged quite a while. They may come up far from where they went down. Eared grebes feed on aquatic insects and larvae. They may dive for these or pick them up from the surface. Eared grebes breed in large shallow lakes in the west from southwestern Canada to the southwestern United States. They move to salt water in the winter. However, they also winter in the interior of the southwest and Mexico. During migration, they may show up anywhere in the United States. Horned grebes breed in shallow freshwater ponds in Alaska and across western and central Canada. In winter, they prefer protected coastal bays and estuaries. They winter along the west coast from Alaska to southern California. They also winter along the east and gulf coasts and inland in the southeast and locally in the southwest. In migration, they may show up anywhere in North America. They both breed on large inland ponds with emergent vegetation for nesting. In winter, horned grebes prefer estuaries and nearshore ocean waters. They can also be found on larger deep inland lakes during migration and winter. Eared grebes are less picky in their water choices. They can be found in the same habitats as horned grebes, but they also often choose smaller and shallower ponds in migration. Thus, they are more widespread within their range during migration. Expect them even in marshes and on sewage ponds. As mentioned, horned grebes are the size of green-winged teal, American coot, and bufflehead. The body on the water is similar in shape to the teal, but with a fluffy tail barely there. The back rises high, and the longer rear of the body tapers to the waterline. The neck is medium long and fairly stout. The head is large. The crown appears quite long from front to rear with a flat top. The head is peaked toward the back, giving it a somewhat crested look. The bill is short and straight, somewhat blunt tipped. The upper and lower mandibles are symmetrical. Pete Dunn describes it as shaped like a short pencil. Eared grebes are barely smaller, but their bodies are shorter, rounder, fluffier, more like the coot. The tuft of a tail, such as it is, rides higher above the water, exposing white under tail coverts. The neck is thin, ending in a small head that is as long as it is tall. It is often peaked above the eye. The bill is short and very thin and sharp. 
the lower mandible angles up, giving the impression of an upturned bill. In breeding plumage, eared grebes are mostly black, showing a bit of chestnut on the sides. The red eye really stands out. A wispy fan of yellow feathers sprouts from behind the eyes. Horned grebes in breeding plumage are also black, but show a chestnut neck. A thick band of yellow feathers start at the eyes and extends to the back of the head. These are the horns for which this species is named. In winter, both grebes have gray bodies paler on the flanks. The crown and hind neck are blackish. The throat is white. The red eye is obvious. Typical horned grebes in non-breeding plumage have a clean white foreneck, cheek, and lower face. The throat is white. The face is white below a line from the bill to under the eyes and straight back to the dark hind neck stripe. Importantly, the upper ear coverts are black while the lower ear coverts, straight back from the eye and below, are white. In contrast, the entire ear coverts are dusky gray on eared grebes. The throat is white and there is a wedge of white on the rear side of the head wrapping up behind the dark ear coverts. The head often looks as if it has two white patches, one on the throat and the other on the back of the head. This is accentuated by a dusky foreneck. However, there are two times of year when horned grebes can have duskier faces and necks and look similar to eared grebes. Young horned grebes in their first fall can be duskier on their neck and face. Also, adult birds in spring, transitioning into their black breeding plumage, can also be tricky. In fall and spring, pay more attention to shape than to color pattern. This is the time to look at the shape of the head and bill. Eared grebes have a rounder head and peaked crown and a thin, sharp pointed and upturned bill. Horned grebes have a longer and flatter head with a thicker, more even and blunt bill. One clincher is the white tip on the bill of horned grebe. It is hard to see, but if present, confirms the ID. Click on this video separating northern from loggerhead shrikes.